Welcome to Live Sense 8. I'm Sheila Applegate. And I'm Zach Hansen. And a special shout out to Justin Applegate for the composition of the Live Sense 8 podcast music. In this podcast, we dive deep into the concepts of consciousness and other interesting trivia in the Netflix original series Sense 8. We're doing an episode by episode exploration of how we can live a Sense 8 life. And we're also talking with cast and crew and team members of Sense8 to hear the experience from their perspective. Enjoy the show. This episode is brought to you by Tracy Wright, Conscious Parenting and Living Coach. She's shining clarity with compassion and understanding. You can find out more about her on consciouslyawesome.com. We also have Marisa Dranchak, Conscious Life Coach. Discover how vibrant life can be. You can find out more about Marisa at myconsciouslifecoach.com. And Divine Phoenix Books. Books with a purpose for a positive change. Check out Divine Phoenix Books at divinephoenixbooks.com. In this segment, we talk about what's going on in the world of the Sense8 fandom. We had some disappointing news this week as we found out that the San Francisco Sense8 mural project had been canceled and our donations refunded. We have Maximilian Ewalt, who plays Grace on Sense8 and who helped tremendously with this project, here to explain in a little bit more detail what happened. Welcome, Maximilian. And as we get started, I just want to thank you for all the time and effort and heart that you put into this project. I know you are as heartbroken, if not more, than everyone else. Our love is just enfolding you as you share with us this process and help people understand. Thank you so much, Sheila. That means a lot to me because it has been very, very hard, very hard. Maybe one of the hardest things I've ever done, actually. Yeah. Because people were depending on it and, and hoping for it. So I can attest with the process from the outside a little bit that you absolutely tried every avenue and just worked beyond humanness <laughs> to try to make this happen. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to try to explain the obstacles that we came up against to give some satisfaction to the people whose heart were in this from the beginning and who feel a little shaken by it. So, so the issues had to do with business liability and insurance. From the very beginning, Deirdre and I had a verbal agreement. It just happened seamlessly. I had this idea, talked to some people, do you, do you want to do this mural? Yes, find a what? I mean, it just, it was just this beautiful progression of events that led the way. But it was all on a verbal agreement. And then we agreed to collaborate on Kickstarter to raise the funds. And I was the public face for that because I had the connection to the fan base and Deirdre did not. So this agreement that we had unknowingly put us into a business relationship. So we fell into what's called a de facto partnership without realizing it. This happens to a lot of people, a lot of art projects. Artists are not known to be great business people. I've learned that myself as an actor. We have to learn to learn the business and it's just as important. So, so by that fact alone, you know, without realizing that that's what we had, we found out that, in the, at least in the United States, all business relationships carry liability risk, and they're usually minimized by buying general liability insurance. And in this case, that kind of insurance 
would pay for business-related bodily injury. We had scaffolding that was going to go 30 feet high with cars below, people going back and forth. You know, people could fall. There's property damage to consider, as well as what's called accidental copyright infringement. So you really have to cross all your T's and get this understood and clear in order to get the right kind of insurance. So we knew insurance was going to be required for me, the artist, painters, scaffolding, property owner, and everybody was going to get their own. But after we got funded and started to look into the insurance and to, to buy it, we first learned that the artists were unable to get adequate insurance for the risk. They could get what is, where they could protect themselves and it could protect third party, like if you dropped a can of paint on somebody's head and they sued you, it would cover that. However, it would not cover me. I could not get any insurance. Um, their insurance could not add me as an additional insured because my role fell into kind of a legal limbo. I was just the public face. I was putting the dots together, as I had said before. But it turned out that it was not that simple. So I had to get legal advice and I spent $1,500 of my own to get it. And after much back and forth with the, the attorney, who was great, and working with all the facts that were before us, the final choice that we decided on was that I should form an LLC, uh, which is a limited liability corporation, because only then can you get this kind of policy, a general liability policy that will cover for these kinds of important risks that we had for this project. So I started the process for myself, and before I started to create the LLC, I started applying for the insurance, because that's my main reason to do this, was to, to get the insurance. And I chose an LLC as a project coordinator, because I got the lawyer's advice to help me figure out exactly what my position was, what my job was, and he helped me write it up in a way that would be the most easily insurable by an insurance company. But this job fell, it was not a neat typical category, and it was very time limited. There are no such policies for this kind of a, a job, at least in the capacity that I was in it. There, so it was a kind of a limited position and a limited time. I couldn't go through with creating the LLC for myself. In addition to that, we had that was causing delays in starting. And in addition to that, I was advised by the lawyer to really get written authorization from all the parties for any trademark or copyright authorization, such as the quote or any form of the quote, the likeness of the images, and the title Sense8. I had no doubt I was going to get it, but it became complicated because different groups buy the rights to different parts of it. And I found out through Netflix that another party had bought all the rights to season one. So I had to contact that person to get the rights to the quote, I am also a we. I was in the process of that. I found the person. I found the office. I sent emails. I talked to the staff. He had not gotten back to me when he had still not, got, he's still not gotten back to me. But I, I know that eventually I would have gotten it, just persevering, but it was going to take time. I was also going to have to contact all the agents of all the different actors to get their permission for that. So it was going to take, be a delay, and we didn't know how long it was going to take. And, but the biggest issue was the insurance. If I couldn't get insurance, then I was really not in a good situation. So this time shortage and unknown delays, we learned something more at the end that was, that was rather important because we didn't know how long this, these delays were going to take. And if we were going to cancel the project, we found out we only had 60 days to do so from the time we received the full funding, which meant by September 15th. And if we did not do the refunds by then, we would not have been able to use the Kickstarter platform to do the refunds. 
we would have had to make personal arrangements with 293 people all over the world to return their money. And this would have been an incredible amount of work. So we ran out of time because of that to find solutions to do it at this time. And hence the difficult decision that we had to make. I was crushed, and I still am crushed by it. However, I believe it has paved the way, it has cleared the path for certainly what not to do in the future, (laughs) at least here in the United States. When you do a project of this size, you have to have all your I's dotted and your T's crossed and research, 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 especially in assessing your risk and finding out what kind of insurance you need and if you can get it. That's the most important thing. My suggestion for anybody going forward would to be to find what whoever you work with on Kickstarter or whatever platform you use, and it's still a great platform, form an LLC together with this limited liability corporation. You have to think about what it is you're doing so that you all are covered under the general liability insurance. That's the first thing. And make sure that however you have it written up, you'll be able to get that insurance. Possibly you could just do it that way. I personally would go find um, a nonprofit to work with, or you could form your own nonprofit. That's a little bit more complicated, though. Then get an agreement with a nonprofit mural organization or artist organization that would be willing to take on the project. And you sign an agreement with them, and they have all the general liability insurance to cover you. The reason you want to work with a nonprofit is that they have all the necessary general liability and coverage to cover everybody, including volunteers, everybody. And that was what we could not get. I know that Susanna posted a message on Facebook that she is moving forward with some projects in Europe. She has been in contact with you, correct? So that all of this for her or for anybody moving forward in the future, getting all of this done before the fundraising so that there isn't the time crunch. Is that the difference for people in the future? Absolutely. Get this done before you even do the fundraising. Get your written agreement all done up. Have it as clear as possible. I would even get legal advice. Mm -hmm. That's me, though. Right. And then go ahead and get the copyright um, taken care of ahead of time, just because you don't know how long that's going to take. Exactly. I learned things like, you know, even if you take a a piece of a, uh, of a sentence, or like there was a, a person who, you know the company LinkedIn? LinkedIn? Mm-hmm. They took the E-D-I-N at the end and added their own thing instead of LinkedIn. I don't know, who, who knows? It could have been banked in or whatever their company was. And they got sued. Mm-hmm. They got sued for just even using E-D-I-N. Right. So this isn't personal to Sensate. It's just all of us having to take a a fast track master course in legal business issues. Absolutely. (laughs) I think one of the concerns that I've heard is that people may be afraid to there's people Mm -hmm. like myself, I'm I'm all for donating, moving my money right over to the next project when the time Mm -hmm. is right. Mm -hmm. But there is some hesitation of donating again and and getting hopes up again. But I think that what I see is that you have really paved the way so that we can breeze through many more of these. So there's a lot of things that Susanna and others moving forward can take from your path in order to really implement the next one in a very smooth way. Yes. That, yes, and I, I feel that's definitely true because you do not want to fall into these 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 traps. It's it's it can ruin your life. <laughs> it really can. So there are other solutions that I see. Keep the design simple, where you don't need 
scaffolding if possible. I was thinking even, this is just my own idea, if people who do these murals maybe form uh, some kind of organization so that they, anybody involved under this, this organization or whatever, nonprofit or whatever it's going to be, gets the right the authorization to use I am also a we. We could just use that, the I am also a we, all over the world, translated in many languages. Mm. And it could be it could be as, you know, simple or as complicated as I am, however you want to do it artistically. But also, if, if people can find a wall that's not so high, where scaffolding isn't involved, that greatly reduces the risk. But there are solutions, and I also thought of here where I live, and I'm not going to give up. I'm going to, I keep my eyes open. I will ask questions. I will help people with anything that they might want to know that I, that I can give them. But I was thinking of, like, City College here in San Francisco, or a community college. If maybe the college would want a mural project for a class, you know, like maybe there's people you know, an art class or something, and they could do a, this mural mm-hmm. at, at, the, at a school, and then they would have all the liability insurance to do it. Right. But I do see other ways, simpler ways, and I don't know the laws in Europe, but I, I think Susanna is more determined than ever now to follow through because of this, and there's a lot of interest in Europe, a lot of interest in Europe, and I know she's learned from this experience, too, what she needs to find out and is not going not gonna to take uh, any chances. So, so I think that's all a good thing. That's a silver lining, and it's going to help people, you know, not fall into the same trap. Yes. Yeah, so, Maximilian, thank you so much for all you put into this. I know that it really consumed much of your life for the last several months and your heart and your soul has infused into the universe that this is going to happen and I have complete faith that all the work that you put into this was not in vain we raised the money once and now more people know more people will understand the process and I th- believe we will have a global sense eight mural project. You just formed the garden for it to grow. <laughs> so thank you. I also just want to add that Deirdre and I both added to the funds to make sure that the backers get hundred percent of their refunds. I just wanted to let you know that. So because some money had been spent on it that couldn't be refunded, so we filled that gap. Hopefully that relieves some of the sting of it. But uh, as I said before, this was a labor of love, but I do not see it as love labor lost. Shakespeare play. Um, <laughs> all is not lost. All is and not lost. I also think that I'm thinking of Grace's quote. Where she says, there's more going on in this world that we don't understand than all the things that we do, and this was certainly true in this case. And the more you learn, the more you realize there's more to learn. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I keep it simple. Keep it simple. Beautiful. That's my big advice going forward. Advice for Sensei Mural Projects and advice for life. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Maximilian. You thank have you done so much. so much, and thank you for being here with us today and sharing in detail for investing your time, your money, your effort, your heart, your tears, everything that you invested into this. And to everyone listening, please have hope and know that this is just the beginning and that Sensei murals will be popping up around the world before we know it. Sensei is going to live on. It always does. It, it, it will rise again. It will. It I have will. no doubt. I have no doubt. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Sheila. Thank you, and Maximilian. Thank you and thank you, everybody, everybody who, who donated to this project. I love you all. And we love you. We are delighted to have City joining us from 
Sri Lanka today. Siddhi is a Sensate super fan and campaigner. You may have recognized her from one of her many articles written about Sense8. There's at least 20 out there. Siddhi is a freelance writer and blogger. Her blog is Media Rants. She is one of the administrators of the Sense8 Fandom official Facebook page and a member of the I am a we campaign. City, welcome to the podcast. Hi guys. Hi City. We're so happy to Hi, have Shiva. you here today. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> so you yeah. are one of the ultimate super fans. <laughs> well <laughs> I think you earned that. I guess I that. I guess I can't deny it now. <laughs> you cannot now. Although there are a lot of super fans, I would say, there with are. Sensei, there which are. is pretty yeah. cool. So can you yeah. share us a little bit about your story? How did you like let let's hear the background of when your world changed from Sense8? Oh wow. <laughs> okay. So so I was one of those people who watched it in 2015. Uh-huh. Like the first week it came out. Because I meet a lot of fans who watched it quite recently. So, right. Yeah. We did too. So, we actually were waiting for it really? to come out. Yeah. Yeah. We knew wow. it was coming and we were counting down actually for a year before waiting for it to come. Oh out. my god. <laughs> really? It's good to know people. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And we got a warning cuz it came out I I think it came well it either came out in Australia ahead of us or they just got to us before but they so we went into it with get past episode 3. <laughs> so Oh. Which I was okay, glad. So you had like warning. We had a warning. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So one of my friends in Canada is the one who told me about it. Uh huh. She told me that Lana, Andy at the time, and Tom Tickwer in uh, Tickwer, right? Yeah, from mm-hmm. Cloud Atlas was involved. I didn't know the name. I didn't know the premise or anything about that. But when she said those three people were involved, I was like, that's the dream team. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. I was like, they're making a TV show. I'm there. Like, I knew it would be something amazing. Right. But since it still surprised me, like, in how much, how, how different it was from anything I've ever seen. Yeah, I yeah I agree with you, and I I was so hopeful going into it, and it exceeded my expectations. Yeah, because I think the first couple of episodes you're trying to figure out what's going on. Right. And yeah, and just because you have, I think even now, even after all the TV had we've had in between 2015 and 2018, people are still finding it difficult to kind of just understand what's going on because it's still it's still very different. There is right. still nothing else like it. So yeah, if you run yeah. into any of those people, just let them to let them know about the podcast so they can follow along <laughs> yeah, with us. I know, right? Right. <laughs> we'll help yeah. them through. <laughs> we'll take their hand and help them through it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I watched it. Um, I loved it immediately. I think it was episode four that really just cemented. Okay, this is this can be one of those shows that I'm going to be obsessed about. Yeah, I think the most important thing it did for me was it talked about people who are sensitive mm-hmm. and people who feel and that, that that was okay, you know? Right. For the first time, like, people who feel sensitive people were the superheroes and that was life-changing for me. Right, right. And that that is part of their superhero versus, oh, here's this rough superhero but here's the no, ping yeah. of he's sensitive, so we can all love him. You know, yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like I, because I think in other shows, in most shows, if the prerequisite is you know suppress your emotions. Right, right. Power through, plow through, just get it done, and leave the emotions for you know after the credits roll or something like that. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So this was this was like the most. I mean, because I mean. As you know, Sensei fans and Sensei characters cry all the time. <laughs> we do. <laughs> we do. We cry watching it. They cry making it. It's, it's so much crying going on. But it's so validating for people who do cry all the time, like me. So, you know, people who are moved easily. So, yeah. 
that was the biggest deal for me about Sensei. So, so the first impact was really that it was something new. And I want to get into a little bit more about your background and your blog, because you were clearly aware of the artists involved. And then the recognizing of the sensitive being a gift. Yes. Did you start writing nice. about Sensei right away? No, I did not. No, okay. I, I, I set up that blog to write movie reviews. Uh huh. So I had two up at the time. Okay. And I did not write about Sensei because I, I, I mean, back then I just did that as like a side project. I wasn't really, you know, if I watched something really interesting, then I would write about it. But it was mostly for movies. Uh huh. So I didn't do that. The first article I wrote was when we got Lana's letter saying we're getting the two-hour special. Mm -hmm. That was the first ever Sensate article I wrote. Nice. Um, yeah. And that was because I wanted to remember that moment. Right. I wanted, I wanted it on paper. So, yeah. What but a that's profound what moment. So that was like three years after the fact. <laughs> and after the cancellation and after the temporary renewal, mm -hmm. sort of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's after that that my blog kind of became all about Sensei. There's nothing else on there anymore. I no actually more started movie another reviews. blog. Oh, okay. <laughs> I started another blog. For the other things. Else. <laughs> there's, because there's no room. And I think people who come there will be disappointed to find anything other than Sensei. <laughs> so. We actually yeah. started at that same time. That's when we yeah. actually started the podcast was around the same time as we, I think we got started not knowing if it would renew or we'd get the, um, yeah, the special. Yeah. And then it came out right as we were, oh, wow. we were starting to launch. So did you connect with fans? Were you in the first campaign that helped that happen? Yes. Yes, I was. The thing is, I didn't know any uh, Sensei fan besides the, my friend who recommended it to me uh -huh. up until the cancellation. I knew one other Sensei fan. And the thing is, I would tell people to watch it. I would ask people if they watched it. They had never heard of it. It was this obscure show that I watched <laughs> by myself, which is common right. in my experience. So it was weird because nobody had ever heard about it until it got canceled. And then... That's when I met other fans, got on Twitter, learned how to use Twitter, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, kind of, yeah. Looking so for some I, group yeah, therapy, like, just like everybody else. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I was there, like, retweeting at a rate for that first month, yeah. Which is why I wrote the article, because I've never had something like that happen to me, ever. I don't think anything like that. Ha I mean, there's got to be similarities for people, but I think that this was mm. such a unique experience. Which I is... know, because you go into it just hurt and disappointed and wondering if this is ever going to work anyway, right? Because right. you've never done this before, first of all. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I remember when it got canceled, I literally Googled, how do you bring back a show that's been canceled? Wow. And... Yes, and there were like maybe two or three examples, but ne not none of them were Netflix. Uh -huh. They were all NBC or some other channels, and they had come back for a little while, but they were canceled again. And there was no rule, like handbook for how what you do when this happens, and especially when you don't know anybody else who's who's as disappointed as you are. So that was amazing, just finding everyone around the world and doing something together for what seemed like years right. but it was only a month <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah but that was i have never felt so i don't know empowered by you know just people coming together and doing something and working for something they believe in and it actually working out right Right. That's so exciting. And did that lead you to having, I mean, I assume from that time, you still have some really close friends that you created during that first month. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like Jonas says, you know, pain binds us closer right. together than pleasure or anything else. Right. So, yeah. So there was the first sensei fandom friend I made was um, Scott Gatti. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, he was the first. He was the first one who actually replied to something I tweeted uh-huh. or something like that. And yeah, and Peter Aaron's Kate, I didn't have the guts to approach. <laughs> um, was Kate know, scary to so, you? <laughs> there were so many. Was, we all fangirled. <laughs> because she was so good and I don't know that's the thing I mean we didn't know how to tweet and what do you say in a tweet <laughs> what can a tweet encompass and you know so it, it was such it was a lot of trial by error trying to figure this out but I think when you care about something you learn the skills you need to you know yeah, for get sure. something done yeah so and we still do that to this day you know we're trying learning video editing and, you know, all kinds of stuff just for Sensei. Yeah, so just bringing boarding from that, what are some of the... Can- so let's start with you. You're still campaigning. You're part of the group oh, no. that is still campaigning for season three. Let's talk about that, your passion for that and why you think it's so important. Because it kind mm-hmm. of, I think, has been a split. There's some people that are just like, I they're mean, okay with the special. They're okay they're with the special. There's also people that are kind of aggressive against you when yes. you do your work about, which it seems like, okay, why not just let people do what they want to do? But I know. <laughs> but why do you yeah. feel it's so important? And why are you dedicating so much of your time and passion to continuing this campaign? First of all, I think it's good to remember that we didn't campaign for a two-hour special, mm-hmm. even in the beginning. We campaigned for a full renewal of, of like a whole news. I mean, at least one season to like properly sum up the stories. So the, the goal has always been the same. But, and the other thing is Lana has publicly said that she has written season three mm-hmm. and she's counting on us fans to make it happen. So, that's also a huge motivating factor Uh and also the fact that we are the only show that has ever come back from the dead in netflix (laughs) on netflix because so many shows get cancelled still get cancelled all the time but none of them have come back not even to sum it up not even for a two-hour special right so we are we are in uncharted territory right now and (laughs) I, i mean i have a lot of new fans asking me are you sure we can get season three Will we get it? Kind of like looking for some kind of guarantee. Uh huh. And the thing is, we because we are in uncharted territory, we can't say no or yes. So I, I would like to think there's a chance. Mm-hmm. But you I can think. definitely say it's worth a try. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, why not? If you want it badly enough. And the thing is, there are enough people who want it badly enough. Right. Because... Yeah, because I think Martin's video that was released a few weeks ago has like nearly 300,000 views already. That's so awesome. Yes, because we put Sensei Season 3 on the title Mm -hmm. and people are like, is this happening? I mean... I mean, all they have to do is just announce it and the world would explode. But, right. You know. <laughs> and, <laughs> but it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Right. And there's a new petition going around that got yes. over 7,000 signatures in a couple. Th- what was it? Over it was 7,500 last time I checked. Okay. Yeah. And that's in yeah. like a week or so, right? Yeah, that's in a very short time. Thing is, we've what happens is there are so many, so many petitions, and different fans start different petitions. That's how it gets kind of convoluted and divided, and you don't know which is real, and you know you've signed one, and so. But this is like the like the most recent, and the, all the major fan accounts are behind this. Okay. So yeah, so this is like the one unified petition we've come up with. Okay. In recent times, yeah. And it's important that everyone get on board. Right. And we will definitely yeah. include the link to that again in this Thank you. Um, in yes. the post yeah. for and this episode. Yes. Good. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So, City, do you have a favorite character or one that you resonate with the most out of the show? Wow. That's hard. Isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it's hard. Because I think anyway, in, in most shows it's hard, but in Sensei it's just near impossible. But if I had to pick, I, I'd pick two, I'd say Will and Wolfgang. Pretty much, you know, I think two sides of the same coin. <laughs> but yeah, those two for me most 
of all, I think. And Riley. So, <laughs> like three. Um, so those eight, most of all, are the ones. Those eight, most of all, yeah. Well, what I was thinking about is that the cluster is a character within itself. So yes, technically, true. we could pick the cluster. Because Zach and I joke all the time about like being multiple people <laughs> inside of our one being. Because so. <laughs> we're all fragmented, right? Exactly. And I think that that is... Yeah, that's part of the beauty is that it cre- that the cluster itself creates a whole being that we can relate to. Yeah. And they all fight as one. So Exactly. You know, they, they all do. help each other. Yeah, nobody's acting alone. So do you relate yeah. to Wolfgang the most is because you're a mobster? Is that, is no. that Oh no? Okay. Because <laughs> you just shot down a, a bunch of people the other day, killed your uncle. <laughs> you know, you know the drill. Everyday stuff. <laughs> Everyday, I Cracking Will. safes. <laughs> no, well, it's Will and Wolfgang. Right, so together. Will for, you know, for all the qualities that we love about Will. The, you know, the whole savior complex. I have a bit of that. Um, Wolfgang for the rage. <laughs> so, <laughs> for the pent-up rage. Yeah. Yeah. Of being the same. <laughs> so. so how do you vent your rage? So you don't kill people. <laughs> I don't kill people. <laughs> Is that what your blogging does for you? <clears throat> yes. Yes, in a way. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, probably, I probably don't went, which is why I like watching movies. Because you get it. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he gets to yeah. do everything you wish you would do, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Most of the stuff, including the murders. <laughs> but... <laughs> Because I think, you know, he, I mean, he's had a really rough childhood. Right. And so it's, you know, it's justified that someone would turn out that way from an upbringing like that. So. Yeah, I think that's one of the other cool things about the cluster is because they do have access to the understanding of their background, they, there's less judgment. um, Yes. Where yeah. when we walk around as little human beings, we don't have that access all the time. And then that's, it's easier to judge people. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. But no matter our what whole, our childhood was, there's a part of us that was hurt. Because just being human is kind of hurtful. It's hurt, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you are, if you have, I don't know, if you have, if you're just empathic by birth or if you're just somebody who had a rough time or, you know, because for me personally, a lot of people ask me if I, you know, for whatever, if I was emotionally in in a bad place, they ask me what happened to you, you know, Mm -hmm. as in there should be some major incident that happened in my childhood or in my past that would justify this kind of emotionalness. Right. And frankly, there isn't anything, but life, everyday life has, you know, it leaves the dent on you and it doesn't have to be huge, abusive or anything like that. If you're picking up on everyone else's energy and if you're just generally a feeling being, you right. know, being human is hard. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah, yeah. it's rough. It is. It's, I mean, it's, it's got rough. its good stuff, but yes, Th- that's the thing. It's rough, but I think Sensei is one of those shows that kind of tells you it doesn't have to be rough all the time. Right. Right. You know? That Especially you on your birthday. Yes. <laughs> you get the birthday yes. off. That's right. You get to party the hard. Birthday, dance, montage, <laughs> yeah. It's rough because you think you're alone. That's why it's rough. Right. Most of, yeah. You knew there were other people in it with you. You would feel less isolated. Right. So do you feel less isolated having connected with the fan base? And have you met, yeah. you know, now you've met people around the world and have you met oh, anyone yeah. in person? What has your experience been? Oh, I have not met a single oh. person who met them <laughs> in my life. But, but the, um, the Sensei app, oh, yeah. crew, uh, uh-huh. they are planning an annual meeting and it will be here in Sri Lanka. Oh, cool. Yes. So I will finally meet some of these people <laughs> who I talk to every day. Yeah, 
yes, that would be great. That yeah. is so, so cool. Met. Now, is it in Sri Lanka because I'm here you're hosting it or no? Okay. It just, it's how did it end up there? Convenient. What? Yeah, I think they're going to have a different city every year, but they picked Oh, that's uh, so here. cool. Yeah. I signed up yes. for the app, but I have to get back and actually hang out over there. I haven't done that. <laughs> I also go there every now and then, just see what's up. I can't really help out there because I'm not tech savvy, uh-huh. but I just go there and talk to the, the guys, and they're really awesome, and that app is going to be amazing when it's finished. Oh, cool. So, yes. That's awesome. Very cool. And yes, I definitely feel a lot less alone. <laughs> I don't feel alone at all. <laughs> Perfect. That's great. Now, yeah, yeah. Now that the pandemic is here, <laughs> <laughs> now and in different pe- time zones as well. So, did you did you adjust your life to match the multiple time zones? Because you're up really late to do this interview. Yeah, <laughs> we appreciate <Yeah>. that. <laughs> no, not super late. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we did Poorab yeah. in the morning, his morning, so it was late for oh. us. So this one was the right. other way around. <laughs> Same thing never stops. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. Because most of most of the fandom is up around this time. I'm kind of alone in my time zone. Right. Their, That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Like, if you stay up later, you have more access to the fans. Yeah. Yeah. Usually I, I do something in the morning and I, then, I, then I get a reaction like 12 hours later. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I know. I didn't really know your time zone because you seem to be on when I'm on. So, good exactly. job. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Maximilian thought I was American. Right. She, I remember yeah. she said to us, she's like, did you know she's in Sri Lanka? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I did not I'm know that. <laughs> lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she was so sweet. Isn't she a sweetheart? Oh my god! Yes, she was amazing. I cried like the first ten minutes. It was so pathetic. But <laughs> I, was, I couldn't believe that she was talking to me, and I was like, "What is going on?" But yeah, but she was so sweet. And she really is a lot like her character. Isn't she? I mean, there's slight differences, but not many. Like where, I don't even know. It's, I it's, don't even know where she ends and where Grace begins. I don't think she knows. <laughs> She's so beautiful. She <laughs> that's is. exciting. Now, that's a big thing then. So that was the first oh. actor or part of the cast or crew that you got to speak with? Yes? Yes, like actually talk with. But right. the first... Uh, like the major interaction was with Brian. Okay. Uh, what was he that? He liked my article. He liked yeah. your article. Nice. Yeah, and he shared it, and yeah, that was like the first. Yeah, Brian ever. is good like that. He is. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. Sweetheart, like that. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Uh-huh. So you write the articles for your own blog, and then you also write for Netflix Life. Yes. Netflix Life and uh, what's on Netflix. And what's on Netflix. Okay. And you've had Sense8 articles on both of those as well. Yes. Yes, I have. What is their relationship to Netflix? They're fan-based and not uh, directly not, related? Neither or is there of those like... are related to Netflix at all. Okay. So, so it's Netflix a... Life is a part of fan-sided. Okay. What's on Netflix is also a, a private website. So there are a lot of websites that report and kind of uh, have their own... just. Basically, the entire website will be based on what's screening on Netflix mm-hmm. and reviewing it, commenting on it, letting people know what's leaving, what's coming, and things like that. So, yeah, but they're not in any way affiliated with the actual company. So, did you write for them prior to Sense8, or was Sense8 no. your articles with Sense8 your first ones you submitted? And yeah, they- so I, no, I didn't actually. Like, I wrote the blog, I had the blog for about a year. Then it was actually Peter Ahrens from the fandom uh-huh. uh, who connected me to um, Casey who works for uh, What's on Netflix because they wanted one article that was going to come out as before the special came out. So they wanted someone from the fandom to write that. Yeah, so I wrote and that, that and that's how they said, okay, you can keep writing Sensei stuff. Awesome. So I, I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and how many articles have you written for those? Um, for Netflix Life, only one because uh, that was I 
split the interview I did with Maximilian into two articles for both websites. Uh huh. So Netflix Life only the just the one, but okay. what's on Netflix about five or six, I think. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And have you gotten and a great, great response? Yeah. Like has that expanded your outreach to the fan base? I think so. Uh but at the same time I think everybody who's anyway interested is already on Twitter. So yeah, that I think there are new fans who who read my um articles on what's on Netflix and get what's going on in the fandom because right. you know, like the mural and the birthday rewatch stuff like that. Right. But I think the hardcore the people who are anyway in the fight know have, you know, they know the information anyway. So what campaign projects are you working on now and how can fans support this process? Okay, uh, the main thing right now is the petition. Uh, that's one of the major ones going on right now. And we are collecting clips for uh, Sora Miano's um, YouTube video that's coming out about Sensei. She's a YouTube reactor. And she's going to make a video about Sensei and its fans. And we're asking people to send in clips of them talking about how much they love the show. So those two are the two current things going on. We have other stuff coming up later on, but I want to—I don't want to say too much about them because we haven't figured some stuff out yet. But people can help move things along by just keeping track of what you know, what we announce, uh, the dates, and when there's activities going on by taking part and doing things like that. It doesn't have to like take up all of your time. Just you know, just participating is huge. Yeah, and um, spreading the good word, <laughs> spreading the good yes, word. <laughs> exactly. Yes, because that's that's a huge uh, obstacle we have in the Sensei fandom, in that a large percent of Sensei fans don't know what's going on with campaigning and activities because they're on Facebook. Right, and, and now you have the Facebook. You started a new Facebook group. Facebook, yes. Uh, yeah, we actually converted an old uh, existing Facebook group that used to belong to the I Am We campaign, okay. which they generously gave up because they, because we wanted to reach out to the fans on Facebook because a vast majority of them have no idea that there's even a fight for season three. Right. And that's just not fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> because other because the most of the um, I'm not saying every single uh, other group out there, but most of them will not let us post campaign material. They will block those messages. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So it's it's not fair that even those who might want to join the fight can't because they don't have the information. And now this is a public group, so yeah. people can invite. Well, you can yeah, you can view the page even if you're not a member, which and is then great. And but we can can people invite others to join? Yes. It? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So that would they be can. a way to go find the safe fandom official. Ask to join, and you will be approved. <laughs> yes. And absolutely. then invite your friends. That will help yes. to get the word over there. And I was even thinking of spreading the word to people who haven't watched Sense8 because I think the continuous. Yes. One of the things for me, I mean, I think uh -huh. another season would be just awesome, but yes. regardless of that outcome, because we know we're going down unknown territory, it yes. is so essential to me to keep people watching it so it, it yes. remains available for generations yes. to come. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So it is, it's yeah. still undiscovered. Right. People still don't know this show exists. Yeah. Right. Which is crazy because it's three years since it's been released. But people are discovering it every day and you get the I'm late to the Sensei party tweets. Right. Which yeah, I love. Right. They come out yeah. all the time. <laughs> they come out all the time. They're like, what happened? And, you know, and, and those fans are the most likely to join the fight because they've just seen Sensei. And right. they're like, I need more. Right. This can't be it. <laughs> like, yeah, and we're know. seeing people's lives continue to change all the time. Yes. You know. Yes. Yeah, that, that's the other thing. Ultimately, I think people, even people who are satisfied with um, the special, I think they should all understand that none of us are fighting for eight episodes of entertainment. You know, there are other shows. There, there's stuff to watch on TV. But right. Sensei is not just a TV show. 
it can change your life and everybody deserves the chance to be moved and be empowered by sensei agreed and yeah I, yes absolutely yeah that's what we're fighting for awesome so how would you say you live the sensei life you know we talk about that this is you know well you told us you've seen nearly or listened to nearly every episode so you really are a super fan here even of live <laughs> sensei so you know this feel but Basically, it's all it to us. It's also about taking it off the screen and even out of yes. the fandom. And how does it mm -hmm. impact? Is it impacted you as a writer? Has it impacted your personal relationships outside of the fandom? Do you see yourself yeah. different in in society? What's what's happening with you living yeah. the sensate life? Uh, well, in in my writing, definitely because it's made me a more. I think a more authentic or honest writer I think mm -hmm. because before I would have cared about I mean I would have spent a lot of time thinking about how what I write would be perceived and whether I should put certain things out there but because of the kind of fandom we have and and what sense it is in general just you know it's about being who you are and that you're enough and that there's nothing wrong with you so because of that, I'm I'm more confident in what I have to say, even if it may not be popular mm -hmm. or, you know, widely accepted. It's made me a more authentic writer, for sure. Beautiful. And, yeah. And I think with relating to other people, I think, because I, I, I think I used to be quite judgmental or I used to be quite negative and nihilistic and you know, kind of, I, there's no purpose to anything, what's the point anyway, apathetic kind of person. Mm -hmm. So so for me to have and to see someone and to think, you know, maybe they're going through something, maybe I shouldn't judge them, maybe I shouldn't, you know, project whatever I'm feeling onto them. And just that, that sense of like, you know, brotherhood or, you know, it's bigger than me and my little life. That kind of thing I, I get all the time. Even if I if I if I do get angry or upset about something, I think that's someone else's journey too. And you know that it's weird for an empath to be more empathetic because of sense <laughs> but... <laughs> Well, no, actually, I'm really glad you said that because that's not weird. Because yeah. I think that you know, and I was. I was thinking about that as you were talking. So you talked about being just a human at child was kind of hard, not because anything was wrong with your life, just because you were yeah. so empathic. And yeah. a lot of people like you described who were shut down and kind of cold, that's a defense mechanism yeah. to being very empathic. So mm -hmm. to then actually, even if some of it was subconscious, um, yeah. to be given the tools on how to be empathic in a healthier way that doesn't consume you allows oh, you God. to embrace that again. So it makes perfect sense. Yes, yes, because be the, the issue with being empathic is that every, like everything's got its volume turned on right. so loud. And most of the time you're just trying to avoid collapsing or being overwhelmed. You're just like, can I just have like you know, five centimeters of space around me because everything's like kind of encroaching on your space and you feel assaulted by it almost, right? Mm -hmm. But I think Sensei changed my perspective on that that, 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 that that's not a bad thing and that I don't, A, I don't have to take on all that. Right. Right. But at the same time, I don't have to be mean about it and be like, you know, that's your stuff. This is my stuff. And, you know shut down completely like which is what they want you to do which which is perceived as a strength the ability to shut down right and not feel and just carry on so yeah so it's weird it, it's strange because you think you're empathic you think you've got this feeling stuff down and, <laughs> and then you're like oh maybe i wasn't doing it right the whole time <laughs> oh wait there's more there's more there's more feeling. depth to this yeah, and there's more feeling, and, and that's the other thing. You, you get the feel-good stuff as well. Right, because, right. Right? Yeah, because <laughs> I think we miss that when we're empathic, because we're all about the, oh, no, because like, the <laughs> negative stuff is so much louder. 
But, yeah, actually, yeah. Um, I, having, you know, worked in the field of spirituality and prior to that, clinical therapy. So as a clinical therapist, wow. we were taught to be empathic, not, mm -hmm. not sympathetic. So empathetic, oh. empathetic versus sympathetic. Sympathetic, yes. So we yes. were trained to be empathetic. And that was prior to empathy, like the, the, this sort of trend of everybody talking yeah, about being empathic. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, buzzword. yeah, I tend to get frustrated with a lot of the, you know, when things become a buzzword and the way people talk. And so oh, I yeah. was really frustrated with talking about being empathic because almost every article is about how hard it is and it how is you protect yourself <laughs> and you know you do this and you do that and I'm like no you're getting it wrong you can't the more you try the more miserable you're gonna be but like yes. so it's just so cool that a yeah. show they didn't have to preach it to you you because you probably read a lot of the you know you were exposed to you can't the I have you had the books, books, right, <laughs> right. And, you know, what maybe preaching wouldn't have taught you that, but then the show comes along and they don't even have to tell you, they show you and your life changes. I love that. That's like, I know. I know. you can tell I when know. I get excited. Yes, it's so true because that's why when I'm trying to recommend it to someone, I'm just saying, trust me, this is going to change your whole life. Right. And I don't know people say that about a lot of stuff. But this is actually true. <laughs> because I mean, I mean, because we've all, I mean, I have the self help books. I have the, you know, mm -hmm. I've looked for the answers on how to fix what's wrong with me and, you know, be a part of society and fit right. in somehow and carry on and not fall apart all the time. But that's just the completely wrong approach. Exactly. And, <laughs> yeah. And it's because that we needed. Lana how to tell us that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but like, because I always, I think we talk about this, this a lot in the fandom, that is, since, since it is so spiritual, yes, that every, every episode is like a lesson, it's like, you, can, it's not, I mean, there's so many layers to what's going on, it's never just the plot, or what someone says, and yeah, it's it's so spiritual on so many different levels. It is. That's what's great is because it shows us that we empathy isn't outside of humanity and neither is yeah. uh, telepathy or spiritual experiences or connectedness. Yes. And so that's the great thing is that we just get to see the the whole spectrum of what it means to be human instead of trying to yes. separate it all out and then feel terrible because we about separate those things out. <laughs> about all of it. Yeah. 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 That's true. Yes. And because it's done through art, our defenses uh -huh. are down. Mm -hmm. Like fiction we're, is so yes. powerful. Yeah. We're not, I, yeah. Yeah. We're not prepared to fight or defend it. We're just observing it and it changes mm -hmm. us. Yeah. It's just so. Yeah. Because I mean, I was so cynical. I mean, you, you know, you couldn't argue with me about stuff because. It was like, I, because of the place I was coming from, you know, it's it's a place of being hurt and being ooh, overwhelmed and one of my favorite movies was Fight Club. Uh -huh. So, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that movie, but it's a very apathetic movie. Right. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's basically about, you know, there's no purpose, might as well blow everything up kind of place. <laughs> so to go from that, <laughs> to I think I'm gonna like work for like you know get season three now. <laughs> oh, I think like, there's more to Fight Club than that, but we won't get into no, that there here. Is. Fight there Club's is. amazing I mean, movie. I still love it. it yeah. yeah, it is. It is, but it's it's pretty still pretty dark, you know. Because I yeah. I used to love and well, you know, it's kind of sucking up all the darkness. I mean, war right. movies, prison movies. Any movie, I mean, it was, I, I saw, I kind of got solace out of seeing suffering because I felt like, oh, these are people like me, they're feeling, you know, right. I know that's like kind of twisted. No, I think a I, lot of people do that. That's why we yeah. have that trend. I mean, that's that. why there's so many yeah. movies out like that, yes. right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's very. It's that, oh, it's like life sucks, but there's nothing I can do about it. So I might as well mope and be sarcastic and you know, bring everybody else down. 
it's, it's coming from a place of hurt most right. of all it is yeah. yeah it is very interesting to me how humanity is developed so far into a place of living vicariously through our movies mm-hmm. and stories which really don't have any real basis on reality if you ask me At all. you know it's right true. and it's just so ro- romanticized and idealistic and and all these things yeah. but yet we relate through it and we just kind of try to live through these things instead of embracing Being out what's there. exactly what's what's it's just interesting to me how we've developed yeah. because i think it's it's the replacement for real life right because we're we're kind of afraid to do any of that stuff in our lives so we we watch yeah. it and we live through characters and we kind of like we channel whatever energy we have into that and that's enough living for us like that's about <laughs> as much living as we can handle the rest of the time we're just going through the motions right there's a lot of instant gratification in doing that too just in you know yes. imagining or like feeling that through oh the tv God. show right so you don't you don't have to worry yeah. about like the time it yes. takes <laughs> to go do all that and the drama. You can get a whole lifetime done exactly. in an hour. <laughs> yes, that's true. Because I used to do that a lot. I used to live inside my head a lot. Like, I mean, it's a form of escapism, but I love, like, just imagining stuff, making stuff up, and just, because it was safer in my head, because I couldn't control what was happening in my environment. So, so then you become, you know, more prone to do that. That's not, a way to live or anything like that but that's how then you replace, replace it with movies and music and you know certain ideologies and things and you can get completely sucked down a, a black hole without even knowing it yeah. because you're just looking for comfort which is yeah. also why sense eight is such a miracle like and i don't i i think it was divinely inspired like i think lana Mm -hmm. and everyone involved is beyond amazing Uh, but i also think that part of that is i don't think they even consciously knew in every moment that the decisions were made how much impact um and like we go back Mm -hmm. and we see all those little tiny things and they're so huge and i know a part of them knew but i think it just flowed and even some of the actors and people that were involved say you know Mm -hmm. like this is the most lana has surrendered and let go of control and just went with the moment and so much of the magic happened in that and the reason mm-hmm. I'm springboarding into this is because this is leaked off the screen. So, yes, we use it still got the violence. It still has yeah, the imagination. Yeah. It still has the escapism or the living through yes. other people. And yet yeah. it's penetrating. Yeah, there's more. Yeah. It makes you want to get up and do something about your life. <laughs> right. And it, and, it, yes. and, it, and, it, and people actually are. It's not even just a wanting to like it's. Yeah. It's leaked off, and there's this blurred line between art and reality. It's which, that yeah. supra consciousness where the sum is greater than its parts. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. And it's all, and, and isn't it always like that? Where you, when you're involved in something like that, you just don't see the big picture, like you know, because before um, Sensei there was Cloud Atlas, and she kind of took some of that into Sense8 mm-hmm. because they, they're so connected, right, right. to, yeah, the uh, eternal recurrence and, you know, we're all connected from womb to tomb, all that. And then Sense8 is this whole other animal on its own. And you don't know while you're in it what your part is because I felt that in the fandom as well because I, when I first joined, I was just following along what everybody else was doing. I didn't, ha- I didn't think I would have any thing to add to anything Mm -hmm. you know I was just pretty passive you know I didn't know there was anything else to do but as you go along you kind of see why you had to go through what you had to go through to get to where you are yeah so you kind of see the big picture way after you've you know you've kind of completed it (laughs) so I think it's the same for Lana and everybody too did you ever imagine that you would be here, like, so connected to a fan base, meeting the people involved? And... I would not be talking to you, Sheila. Right, <laughs> right. I would cancel on you. Like, oh, like you would have just canceled. Before. I thought, like, we wouldn't I... have met. <laughs> <laughs> but you would have set us up. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> but you would have 
cat man, I would agree to this, and then I would be like, oh my god, I can't do this. What the hell? No, no. I used to get like, uh, like you know, I used to get like a kind of buzz when people canceled plans on me. Right. And I was like, oh, oh, I have to go. Yeah, that's an introvert, and I I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. I can stay home now. <laughs> yeah. So no, none of this. My life right now. I mean, I know it's it's kind of silly as well because I haven't really. I mean, you know, I'm a part of a fandom. It's not really a big deal in the great scheme of things. But my life is completely different from what it was a year and a half ago. And strangely enough, the cancellation kind of brought everyone together, too. Right. It, it actually I, was an obstacle to overcome in the plot of yeah. the life of Sensei. Yeah. Yeah. In a way, it's amazing how it, that also kind of worked in its favor, that all these people who were on their own loving the show was like, oh, wait, wait, there are other people and we can do something together. Yeah. And, I don't think we would be here today. Thanks, Netflix. Yeah, thanks for canceling Netflix. <laughs> now you can reinstate yeah. it. We learned our lesson. We're all set to go forward. <laughs> <laughs> Everything <laughs> is in the highest good. <laughs> we get it. Is. it. <laughs> yeah. What about the people to... in your life outside of the fandom? Have they noticed a change in you? Well, first of all, they all say I don't have enough time for them. Um, <laughs> they all... And they're all like, are you, like, meeting the cast? Will you be invited to the premiere? I'm like, it doesn't work like that. And you know, I mean, this is what they assume. I mean, I, first of all, uh, fandoms and um, cosplaying, stuff like that is not really big here. Mm -hmm. Not that we don't have that, but it's, it's mostly, you know, teens, yeah, really young people who are involved in fandoms and stuff like that. Right. So, Yeah. So it's it's a bit of a, I mean my friends know because they love Sensei too but they are not campaigners they like do stuff when I ask them to. Uh-huh. But, um, <laughs> but you do have your friends around you that have been converted I, to the good yes. news of Sensei. Oh yeah. <laughs> But what about your personality? Do they have they been able to mention a noticing a shift like in your openness and the way you're Hopefully. responding to people? Yeah, because like I'm because I generally they all recommend um, my previous movie tastes, like you know, oh, there's a pre there's like World War Two movie coming out. You have to see it. You're gonna love this. <laughs> like it looks so harrowing and depressing. You're love it. <laughs> and and I and, and and sometimes I will actually give it a shot. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't like it as much. I'm like, what was that? <laughs> I have like a book. I have a cupboard full of books and movies. I will probably not watch now because. It fed into something, you know, that I needed a long time ago. And right, right now, I don't, yeah, I'm not, I'm not in that place anymore. That's so, so cool. That's so I awesome. know, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know what they yeah. say, once you go sense eight, you never go back. <laughs> you go back. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, which is, this is why we need like, more people to watch it. We you do. Know, we do. Yeah. We should go out on the street corners. Oh my <laughs> well, there's a um, hugs from mom campaign. That, and I meant like, so there's some a pride parade somewhere, I think near the army base here. And they were promoting to have hugs from moms to give people hugs. And I was like, we should go and we should pass out since <laughs> Like, we should hug him, and then we should give him a brochure to watch Sensei. Yeah, no, it's, that's weird, because that happens when you're, like, out, like, when you're a campaigner and you see any kind of social gathering or any kind of where people are going to be, you know, like, crowded together. You're like, how can I promote Sensei here? Like, <laughs> how, how do I get them to talk about Sensei? So, Sheila just yeah. nailed it. So anybody out in the fandom, if you want to make a printable brochure... Oh, that you, you can go. pass out and put we on all the doctor's offices. Oops, we have <laughs> we have got you covered. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so if you send us a link, we'll put that in the blog posts associated sure. with this episode. <laughs> we keep all the stuff from our previous campaigns. So in case we need it, you know. Right. So, yeah, we have a lot of promotional material. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, you, you really 
have done a lot. Like, the, I mean, I don't know who is doing everything, you know, where everything gets divided up, but there's just so much being done. No, yeah, we all do it together. That's the beauty of it because, I mean, not, nobody's doing anything in isolation and I don't think anybody can. Uh -huh. I can, you know, put out an idea and tweet it out myself and nothing would happen. Right. You know, yeah, because... Um, there's like a whole group in, in your part of that, the right. brainstorming group and the main accounts. It's such a joint effort, even if it's just one post or there's like three people working on it. That's the, that's what I love about the whole campaigning thing. It's it's a lot of fun, too, because it's it's like working in this office that exists on Twitter. You know? Right. It just, <laughs> you go in, you clock in and some people clock out when you clock in. <laughs> and you pick up where they left off. It's it's really cool. And, and it's something you love. And, you know, it's sensei, so it doesn't feel like work. So, yeah. And it, it's, it's funny because it reminds me of political campaigning, but it's almost uh -huh. like it's beyond that. It's like, okay, yeah. everybody else, you, you, you know, politics are important, but let's get past this to the global yes. shift. <laughs> you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, so true because it's so ahead of its time. Right. That's also part of why it was canceled and, it, you know, it, that it doesn't have the audience or, you know, doesn't seem to be perceived as having the audience. It does because it's still so ahead of its time. And if you look at everything, everything else on TV, you see why. Right. Because they're not there yet. And it's kind of hard to shift people. I mean, if they watch it, they will definitely be shifted. But it's hard to, to get them to watch it in the first to place. To watch it because then they're like, oh, because I've had friends who have watched it who were like, like, oh, it was too emotional, or you know, oh, like I need to set aside time because I'll feel bad. Like I'll feel emotional afterwards, and even that seems like work to them. <laughs> so. <laughs> Like they like the passive experience of just watching something just mindless going on screen and being like, okay, I've had my dinner. Right. Done. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of entertainment. So when when, it, when something gets inside you, it makes them very uncomfortable. And like, <laughs> that. Like, I don't want to feel stuff. So, uh, <laughs> so there are those people. But most people, I mean, if you're human, you will love Sensei. So. <laughs> if and you're, you're not a not, robot. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, and if you're not human and you're here, you will love Sensei. <laughs> All you aliens out there, you will love it too. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of like AI. I'm thinking of Haley Joel Osment. He would love Sensei. Teddy <laughs> <laughs> Bear. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Well, thank you, City, for being here and for not standing yes. us up. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to share before we end today? Um, I would like to tell everyone to keep fighting, not to give up, and to remember that this is the age of renewals and reboots. So I don't see why we can't be a part of that. Because, hello, it's Sense8. <laughs> and, um, and I want to thank everyone in the brainstorming group for working so hard every single day for... 18 months straight and all of them I just love them so much and I'm so grateful to all of them I think there's about 33 or 4 and we have new people coming in all the time and if you have ideas on how to promote Sensei get Netflix to listen or anything we are all ears please DM us awesome and just shout out your Twitter account yeah uh, that's at City Nick Head S I D D Y N I I N I C K H E A D. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll also include that in the blog. Well, thank you, Sidi. This has yes, been thank you very much. so fun to be with you and thank to talk you, with Sheila. you. And thank you for all your hard work that you do for yes. Sense Eight and being and to part everyone. of the fandom yeah. and stepping up. You? And <laughs> we appreciate it. Really hard. Awesome. Thank you, Sidi. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, City, so much for being on the podcast today. I got to give a big shout out to Miss Sarah Applegate, the official editor of the Live Sensei podcast. 
And thank you very much for tuning in with us and spending your time with us here today. We would really appreciate your help over on patreon.com forward slash live sense eight, where you can become a member and participate in the growth of this show by becoming a member over there. And you can also pick up some exclusive perks, extended content, and even classes from Sheila and Applegate and myself on how to live the Sensate life. Other than that, thank you very much. Until next time, stay connected.